I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite super easy recipes for instant pot applesauce. We went to a local orchard and snagged all these apples. Those are tomatoes. I made tomato sauce in another video and I still have this bag of apples from the orchard that I need to wash. So tons of applesauce. I'm hoping to make it through the year. Tilly goes through about a quart a week or so. And one of my favorite ways to make this is in the Instapot and I just throw them in whole like this. I don't peel them, I don't cut them, I do just give them a good wash. I got inspiration from this from Farmhouse on Boone. It's a great YouTube channel if you haven't checked it out. I believe her name is Lisa and she does this. She just puts them whole like this and I'm just trying to make sure they fit in my big Instapot I'm starting off with first and I just put it on for about 20-25 minutes. You can leave it longer. Some of these I actually in a little bit put them in the Instapot, set it, and then went upstairs put the kids down for a nap so I didn't get back to it for about an hour and a half. But I just load up as many apples will fit in here. I will say that I did this, I've been doing it for a couple days, and one of the days I ended up chopping the apples in quarters just so I could cram even more apples in my Instapot. But usually I do it with a three pound bag of apples that I get from Costco. And I'm going to be canning these with my steam canner in a little bit if you're interested in watching how I do that. So I was just getting my jar set up. And the key I feel like to making this applesauce super easy is a food mill. This is OXO or OXO. I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. I just bought this fairly recently. I had another one that I bought at an Amish market in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but it was a lot smaller than this one, so it took forever. And this one is nice because it goes right in the dishwasher. So all I do is here's Instapot number one. You can see that apples are just like completely obliterated. I pull up that rack and then I just start spooning it into the food mill and passing it through. Um, I don't think I said this before, but what I like to put in with the apples is a cup of water, and I did a cup of water for both Instapots. That way I don't have to drain the applesauce at all. Basically all of this mush is gonna go right into the food mill, and I will spin it both directions. That's kind of just what works for me. I'll spin it one way for a little bit, and then I'll go the other way, back and forth, back and forth. And the seeds don't go through if you use the right grate. I have tried to use the larger grate to make it go faster, and the seeds came through. So on mine came with three levels of like dyes, I guess, and I'm using the middle one and I just keep plowing through. So here is the big Instapot that I have. I do have two of them as you have already guessed. The big one I usually bring out for like mashed potatoes for the holidays, um, seasonal events like this, like canning applesauce. And you can see this applesauce actually is a little bit darker because I left it in there a little bit longer. Still tastes absolutely amazing, even with the skin on. I believe there are benefits to eating apple skins. I hope that's not incorrect, but I believe I had heard that there's actually vitamins in the skins if you eat them. So, and you can see here's more apples. So I am just loading this up and just keep going. I was, I did this over a couple days, went through all these apples. I don't actually know how many I had, if I had to guess maybe 20 pounds or something around there. And here you can see, this is what the applesauce looks like. Now this is hot, but you can see it's thick. So it will cool down. If you put it in the fridge, obviously it will thicken up is what I was trying to say. This is like the perfect consistency applesauce that we use in my family. And this is the book I'm using. This is the Ball Home Preserve. I like the Spiral Bound. I've used this for years and years. I'm just using the basic applesauce recipe on page 180. And I'm gonna start by just adding a little bit of lemon juice. And I just add it, instead of to the whole batch, I add it per whatever you're using, quart or pint. I'm, I was using both, but in this instance, I'm using quart. So I'm just gonna put that lemon juice on the bottom and then ladle the hot applesauce right on top and fill up all those jars, put lids on them, and put them in my steam canner. And I think I've showed my steam canner before. I've had both, I had the water bath canner forever. I have an electric stove, so it takes forever for a bath, water bath canner to heat up. So I ditched it a while back. I think I've had the steam canner for at least five, six, seven years, something like that, and I just like it. There's you don't have to add nearly as much water it just heats up a lot faster i have seen a lot of people who do serious canning get one of those outdoor propane burners that's like on a stand and then you just take it outside which i think would be lovely because whenever i do these cannings of applesauce or tomatoes here in virginia it's still really really hot so i don't know if i'll be getting something different but in the meantime i like this steam canner i don't know if I still have the actual one that I bought. If I can find it, I'll link it below. 
And then what I like to do is just take some white vinegar, rub it around the rims, and if you have a dirty jar, clean that one last. I got that as a tip from somebody. I just thought that was so smart. And then I'm just putting on all the lids here, and I'm going to put the bands on, and I have this tip from somebody that said, you you tighten the bands with your thumb and your middle finger only so it's a two finger tighten you don't want to really tighten them and here i'm taking off the tomato sauce that i had done first i just like to keep this going i like to have a couple days where i'm just canning all day long so i'm adding some more water i'm going to let that come up to temp and put all of my applesauce on here and there is a hole in the lid where the steam comes out and I forget the measurement off the top of my head you just follow the manufacturer I believe mine is like six or eight inches when that steam jets out for six to eight inches it is 20 minutes and I just let that go so I took I apologize for my sick voice I took these off after 20 minutes and I was like wow I can't believe I didn't fill that one very much but that's weird okay we'll just eat that one first and then I realized there's stuff in the water I've heard about this happening but I've never had it happen my um jar shattered so obviously we are not going to eat that I'm just going to let this cool down and I'll remove that and unfortunately throw it away then give that a rinse out we're getting close to nap time I have this set up here I have this full of apples I'm gonna go ahead and puree it uh, again thank goodness I have two of these instant pot inserts the other one that is dirty is in my dishwasher so I'm going to puree the applesauce in here and then I'm going to actually just put it on my instant pot over there on warm so it stays hot while I put Tilly down and then I just have these left I'm hoping I'm, I'm probably just gonna fill my large instant pot one more time and then these will just go in the fridge for eating or you know whatever we're gonna use apples for I still have that massive bag of apples but I have not washed them and I'm probably going to do some canning at nighttime because it's been a little tricky trying to can these and hold their attention back there Tilly and Paul are wandering around I have Miss Rachel on right now so that is my plan but this is my loot so far I have three tomatoes and four apples because I have one casualty it's pretty sad 